Muscat, the capital city of Oman, is highly modern while also deeply rooted in the past. Nestled between the mountains and the sea is Matra, the historical center of Muscat. The square in front of the souk is a popular meeting point. Men wear the traditional Omani clothing, the white robe, the dish dasha, and the kuma, an embroidered cap. In public, most of the women wear a floor-length, cloak-like dress, the abaya, and a headscarf. There has been a women's team at Oman Sale since 2011, specifically requested by the Sultan. This is quite different to other Arab states, where the practicing of sport by women is unusual. The idea to revive Oman's seafaring tradition comes from the highest authority. The incumbent ruler, Sultan Qaboos, started the sailing program in 2008 so that his sultanate would become internationally recognized for sporting achievements. Help in building the team comes from experienced sports people from abroad. The women's team has already participated in international competitions. Their furthest journey was to northern Germany for the Kiel Week sailing event. The sport offers young women the chance to develop self-confidence and independence in a country where the traditional notion of a dominant male is still widespread. Good wind here. Yes. Sailing, of course, is life. Life is another life, of course, than the life we live. Because when we sail, on the sea, we feel all the problems, all the problems, and we feel the relief in the sea. And we enjoy it. Every day, of course, we see something new and new in sailing. And thankfully, we hope we hope from all of the women that we will be able to the three female sailors are a symbol of the new modern Muscat. The history of the city stretches back to 2000 BC. Surrounded by mountains, Muscat was regarded as a safe haven. This was particularly recognized by the Portuguese, who conquered Muscat and built many fortresses in the 16th century. However, in time the harbour lost its significance and Muscat fell into a deep sleep. Sultan Qaboos has governed in the new palace since 1970. He overthrew his conservative father from the throne and set himself an ambitious target to contentiously lead the entirely underdeveloped country into a new modern era.
One of the last halwa manufacturers of Muscat is situated in a narrow lane. The delivery of margarine is anxiously awaited here. Halwa is the traditional dessert of the Omani people. Mohammed bin Zahran is one of the last remaining manufacturers who make halwa the old way. The only difference today is a gas flame which heats the underneath of the copper vat rather than the wooden fire. Mohammed and his assistant cook the halwa in accordance with the age-old family recipe. Accolades and awards adorn Mohammed's workshop, where the 79-year-old still uses the stirring spoon. Omani halwa is a solid dessert made from sugar, starch and fat, spiced with saffron and steeped in rose water. Before Western goods came into the country, halwa was the only dessert available. Constant stirring prevents the halwa mixture from burning. Mohammed has an ingrained instinct in knowing when the mix is ready. Mohammed bin Zahran can remember when almost medieval conditions characterized his home city of Muscat. لما انا حفظت السيارات في حفظي انا ما ترسى السيارات الا الى الحيل هذا الحيل العوامر لا اكثر ولا اقل كانت وبعد الحيل عاد ماشي السيارات الاخرى هناك الا على الجمال او على الحمير هذا في حفظي انا في قبل السبعينات هذا في عهد السلطان سعيد بن تيمور رحمه الله عليه رحمه الله تعالى تتنزل عليه بكره واصيلا هذا هو حفظه اما في عهد السلطان قابوس ابقاه الله تعالى ويد بن اصل عنده الحياه تغيرت والحمد لله nothing has changed in the production of halwa a wealthy businessman has ordered a large pan for a celebration he spends 135 rials around 300 dollars it is tradition to spoil guests with the dessert, and Mohammed makes the best halwa in the whole of Muscat. The boss personally supervises transport of the valuable freight. <laughs> الآن جهزت وضعت في هذا الذناء إن شاء الله أنها مكان معروف عنه هذا طلب خاص لناس خاصين وإن شاء الله تعجب يعجب بهم يعجب بها إن شاء الله تعالى هذا زبون من لجن أمد بعيد ولا يزال يعني متمسك بنا ونحن متمسكين به إن شاء الله هذا هو Previously, it was the mountains that protected Old Muscat from raiders from the outback. Today, however, they act as a barrier to the expansion of the city, and the houses are clustered side by side. Instead, Muscat extends along the sea. Sultan Qaboos, who studied in England, loves prestigious projects. The Royal Opera House, completed in 2011, is equipped with all pageantries imaginable. 
It attracts even international stars. In the large mosque that bears his name, Sultan Qaboos has also created an architectural monument. Islam is the national religion. However, most Omanis are Ibadis. Peace and tolerance towards people of different faiths categorize this interpretation of Islam. Six thousand five hundred believers find space in the large prayer hall. More than 1,200 lights glow in the eight tons of heavy crystal chandeliers. Islam and absolute monarchy may not sound progressive at first. However, equality between men and women is legally consolidated in the constitution of Oman. In Muscat, women take active part in public life. One of them is Huda al-Latvi. Huda is a businesswoman and is on her way to an appointment in the city. She runs a chain of ice cream shops, a woman at the wheel. Something that would be unthinkable in other Arab countries is quite normal in Muscat. Here in Oman, it's a, a very easy, and actually, if a woman doesn't drive or a woman doesn't have a license, it's kind of weird, like, how come you don't have a license? It's like you're not going to school. Muscat is a city for driving. The greater area stretches along the sea for 60 kilometers. This means large distances separate parts of the city. The heat takes care of the rest. Nobody enjoys walking here. Muscat, if you could see, it has mountains, it has beaches, it has so many, um, you know, natural uh, structure. So it wasn't civilized. So many places didn't have the basic services, electricity, water, and they weren't developed. But lately, these all places are developed, and that makes things easier for us. Makes uh, Muscat, even it's big, but it's easy to reach from one place to another. Huda is a marketing expert and dreams of setting up her own global franchise chain. As a starting point, she owns five ice cream shops in Muscat. She checks them regularly to see if everything is running to her satisfaction and arrives unannounced most of the time. A female boss is still unusual in Muscat. So As in country, Oman is one of the countries that generally they support women. My advice to all the women, I mean, if you live in such a country and you have some maybe conflicts here and there, some struggle here and there, I mean, you should do whatever you want to do. And uh, alhamdulillah in Oman, thank God, it's a, it's a very uh, nice environment, uh, sorry, environment for women to, to be able to be who they are and raise to do whatever they want to do. Vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry flavors. Ice cream parlors in Muscat are still something special. Customers are often mothers who want to give their children a treat. In contrast with Huda, most women wear a headscarf in public. Here in Oman, it's an optional. So that means some places you go, let's say a funeral or a ministry or a place that's full of men. So it's part of respecting the culture you have to, you know, have it around or put it on. But um, again, if you, you go to uh, shopping or different places, whatever, you don't have to have it on. So it's optional in this culture. and. Uh, uh, in, in, in Oman, we have a very open-minded culture that respect the person, woman or men, for whoever they are and what they do. The next appointment, 
a university lecturer. Huda teaches at a school of economics and finance in Muscat and passes on experience from her business life. First, who are entrepreneurs? Before 1970, there were only three Quran schools for boys. Since school became compulsory for girls, young women have flooded universities to such an extent that sometimes quotas for men have had to be implemented. Young women are also clearly in the majority in Huda's class. They are the ones who will shape the future of their country. Control them. Control my fears. And be independent. Okay. If we actually work hard in making a human proper... After the university lecture, Huda is en route again for her next appointment. Recently, she moved into a new building in an industrial area of Muscat with her company. When everything is ready, the ice cream will be manufactured here. Huda meets with her business partner and husband, Rami. Hey, babe. Hello. How are you doing today? How was your lecture? The laboratory in which new flavors are developed is Rami's domain. Yes, yeah, so we'll discover new flavors. Definitely. Let's try something new today. Strict hygiene rules are in force here. Rami is working meticulously on a new variety, frankincense. Hey, babe. So this is uh, what we would like to explore. This is the recently, if you can smell it. We've, we got this uh, frankincense from Salala Fresh. Mm -hmm. A married couple working together. Can it succeed? It's very difficult, to be honest. <laughs> very difficult. Um, definitely, we have some conflicts in certain things, but we try our best not to mix home with the with the business, and we try to allocate tasks so we don't get this conflict of interest or conflict of power, etc. So yeah, it's a. Uh, that's what I think. It's a bit difficult, but well, it's that's a... from her side, but I really enjoy it. <laughs> I can't have enough of her, so I have her at home and they'll work. How beautiful is that? It's mm. I love my job. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is approved for the day. Yeah. yeah. And uh, seriously, we need to meet for the business for this. Huda and Rami studied abroad and are open-minded. However, Muscat is a city with many different faces. Only around the corner does it seem as though time has stood still. This is also Muscat, fishing villages, where life peacefully takes its course. Nobody would suspect that this is part of a large city. In Muscat, it is striking that hardly anybody wears Western clothes. The inhabitants, whether modern or conservative, dress traditionally. Omani men never leave home without the kuma, a richly decorated cap. The kuma is part of everyday wear and is available in different colors and designs. Today, they are mostly manufactured by machine. A hand-stitched kuma is something special. In the fishing villages of Muscat, the women maintain this tradition. The caps are mostly presents for sons or the husband. For Nadia, Fatma and Amna, embroidery is a pastime, which requires a lot of patience. Sometimes the women receive such orders. In these cases, the kuma is naturally more expensive. It is a symbol of status and of adulthood for a man to wear on his head. 
الرسمة دي قيمة روسة بس إذا فيها بس شيء بسيط بس أرض كانت يعني ما فيها نقشة بس مثل هذا القماش بس والرسم يعني والخيطة هذا لا عادي يعني وبعدين الرسمات يعتمد يعني إذا كان لون نفس لون واحد القيمة دقي غير إذا لونين مثل هذه نفس الشيء القيمة دقي غير يعني ما ما نفس السعر تكون Just as the caps are part of traditional men's clothing, the women of Muscat also have a special style of clothing. The abaya, the plain black overdress, is only worn in public. Jeans, t-shirts and other garments can be concealed underneath. ملابس العمانية كل يعني كل ولاية كل منطقة يعني كل ولاية بلبسها مثلا محافظة مسقط لبس التجداش العمانية مثل هذا اللي مصدرة والصروال الصروال والوقاية وفي منهم يلبسوا شيلة شيلة عمانية Before the Sultanate of Oman experienced prosperity through the export of petroleum and gas, daily life was hard for people in the sparse environment of Muscat. Over 2,000 years ago, the Omanis found a way to extract fertile soils from the inhospitable landscape. They began to cultivate dates in these oases. The date palm is the Omani tree of life. Fifteen fruit per day cover the human requirement for vitamins and minerals. Dates were the most important means of food for a long time. The most valuable commodity in Oman is water. In order to savor every drop, a sophisticated system of water channels is still in use from ancient times. This is how precious water arrives in the villages. Water is so important that it even has its own profession. The water supervisor is responsible for the fair distribution of water, and he is therefore one of the most important men in the village. ويحاضر النجوم وبعدين اتفقوا هذا للشياب اللولوجين من شاننا قسمه بالساعة فهمت الليل وفي النهار علمت هذا During the day the time is defined by the sundial in the village square <تصفيق> Zahir, the water supervisor, tells his son how to interpret this. On the ground, embedded stones divide the day up into quarter hours. This system has worked for over 2,000 years. The position of water supervisor is a little like that of a mayor. He has to determine how much water is allocated to each inhabitant of the village. It is distributed fairly so that all of the fields can be watered. In contrast, the members of the village community participate in maintaining and rehabilitating the water channels. <laughs> Through a system of simple locks, the water is led through channels to the fields. ملحة حلمة هذا وإحنا الحمد لله الله تعالى جعل في الرساق عندنا ثروة مائية واجد الحمد لله رستاك's watering system has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2006 
Dates are grown on around 60% of agriculturally used areas in Oman. Plantation owner Hilal must now pollinate his palms by hand in order to produce a good harvest. هذه هي حبوب اللقاح زين نسميها النبات ها صحي الحداش تاعنا تاعي يغسل الصابون يقوم الواد الهلال ان شاء الله بعد شويه بعمليه التنبيت او التلقيح النخيل اي والله هو خاض خلاص مجموعه من النبات وراح ان شاء الله يقوم بعمليه التلقيح على راحتك على راحتك Hilal is an experienced climber. Secured only by a rope, he climbs the palm, which is at least 10 meters high. At the top, he binds together the pollen bunches of the male plants and the flower heads of the female plants. The is a lot of plants for It's a lot of plants plants and مثل الشاشة ونفس الوقت هي إرث للعمانيين بشكل عام. For Hilal, this means waiting and hoping for a rich harvest. The fortress of Rustak was the seat of government in the 17th century after Muscat had been conquered by the Portuguese. Only in the 18th century did the Omani rulers return it to Muscat. Evenings in the city are meant to be enjoyed. The best way is in an air-conditioned car or to go for a walk on the beach. Evening prayers mark the end of the day. Time for family life. After a long working day, businesswoman Huda Al Latvi now tackles her son's homework. Spelling movie E. I'm trying to teach my uh, my kids to be um, to be their own character. All what I do is shape them and guide them to the right way, and most importantly, to be independent, having their own way of sharing their thoughts, making decisions, and uh, believing in themselves. So, I mean, I try, and I hope it works. <laughs> Huda and Rami are typical of the new upper middle class in Muscat. Their lifestyle is modern, but nevertheless oriented towards traditional values and standards. Organizing family and career are difficulties that Huda knows only too well just like mothers in the West. That's the only time that we meet. It's over the dinner, where it's uh, the main meal. That's why we try to keep it early, um, around 6.30. And uh, we have family conversation, chit-chat, um, and talk about the day, and um, you know the issues of the day, plans for the future, etc. You know, it's like a, a break time for us to catch up with each other. 
Before the country opened up to the world, many business people felt defeated by the restrictive policies of the old Sultan and left the country. Since then, it has become valuable to do business in Muscat. Look, there is no perfect city in the world. Every country has uh, its pros and cons, but definitely there is a lot of potential in Almat and there is a lot of uh, future we can see. Every home in Muscat is equipped with at least one air conditioning unit. A couple of decades ago, the people lived very differently. The Hajar Mountains separate the coastal region from the outback in a half moon shape, a stone desert. In the dried out riverbeds, the wadis, date palms, and abandoned villages. The people were still living in such mud walled houses in the 1980s. These buildings made from natural building materials were perfectly adapted to the hot climate. Now that new houses with a bath and air conditioning unit are affordable, the old ones have simply been abandoned. Oman is one of the most sparsely populated countries on the planet. Rugged mountains and hostile deserts cover the majority of national territory. It is especially interesting for geologists. <laughs> Mohammed Al Kindi and his colleague Aisha Al Hadri are in the urban area of Muscat. Quite close to the city, there are rock formations which provide the geologists with an insight into geological history. See the difference between the two, like the dark units in here. This is one of the interesting places in the area because you can see the high rate of deformation within the rocks themselves. So if you look at this outcrop in particular, these rocks were actually horizontal like this. But if you look at the outcrop now, it looks very nicely tilted like this. So what, what happened in this place was actually some sort of colliding between two mountains, if, if, if that's correct to say, and then these layers were just twisted like this. So if you look at the outer crop, they look really amazing. Mohammed and Aisha want to document the special rock formations in order to prepare teaching material. Thanks to modern technology, they no longer have to climb the mountain themselves. Today, a camera drone takes care of this. How high it can fly? Very high. But now you can see how the structure is basically continuing to the other side. The dried out riverbed between the mountains is easily discernible. I actually call Oman the paradise of geology. And one of the reasons for that is that because Oman is located on the eastern uh, edge of Arabia, which is, which is basically a, um, a plate, a separate plate. And um, on that plate, you know, it has witness, witnessed over millions of year, years, hundreds of millions of years, all sorts of tectonics, all sorts of uh, different types of environments and so on. So it, it really captures, uh, you know, a lot of the processes that have happened on the earth in, in great detail. Such a good view of the cross section through the earth's layers of rock can only be provided by the Hajar Mountains. What would usually be deep beneath the earth lies on the surface here. People have resided here in the valley since prehistoric times. These are the foothills of the city of Muscat today.
The sea was shallow here millions of years ago. Traces of it can still be found today. These are called uh, oncolites, which were basically deposited in this uh, layer, which is about, I don't know, one to two meters thick in overall. And they're very nice uh, to study and to understand also the environment of the position of these rocks that probably happened here, you know, 50 or 60 million years ago. Oncolites originate from deposits of algae or seashells, for example. This is evidence that there used to be marine life here. And they penetrate through these folds and then they come back to the surface as the headwaters. Yes, exactly. So basically they... It is barely imaginable that a tropical sea rippled here once upon a time instead of this hot, dry moon landscape. Its inhabitants have left further traces behind in the mountains of Muscat. So just by walking here, you can actually see a lot of different types of uh, fossils here, specifically marine fossils, especially in the rocks that date back to about 50 to 60 million years ago, in a, in a time period we call the tertiary. So what you have here, for instance, is a very nice uh, Echinoid, which is still actually living in the shallow seas today. And you can see all the you know, different uh, sides of it as well. And uh, here, for instance, you have an oyster, a very nice oyster as well. And you can see also the different details of the mm -hmm. oyster. So this is a very nice, well-preserved uh, oyster here. Millions of years ago, these living creatures laid the foundations for Amman's wealth today, black gold. Very generally, you have the fossils, uh, the, uh, the living organisms in the, uh, the marine environment, but then uh, when the sediments start to pile up on top of these organisms, when, when they die, the soft tissues of these bodies uh, with uh, the depth, the temperature and the high pressure uh, below the Earth's surface, they start to be converted into um, uh, into oil. The mountains and the sea have always determined the lives of people in Muscat. The Gulf of Amman off Muscat is still clean and rich in fish. Abdullah and his son Yusuf live in one of Muscat's fishing villages. Before sunset, they prepare their boat for departure. At daybreak, they go out to sea. However, their haul only begins once their bait has been caught. Yusuf and Abdullah look out for young sardines which linger directly beneath the surface of the water. They will use them later as bait in order to attract big fish for their own catch. The 
The sardines caught will be stored in a dinghy filled with water. Abdullah learned how to fish from his father. Likewise, he is teaching the same to his son now. There are 150 types of fish here on the coast. In order to entice the big fish, Abdullah throws the sardines as bait. Abdullah and Yusuf fish directly off the Bay of Matra. This is also where many cruise ships drop off their day passengers. السلطنة أو كالولاية بين مطرح ومسقط تستخدم يعني السياح لكن فيما بعد لما يكون التطور موجود هذا وطبعا راح تكون هناك الزيادة وهذا الزيادة فعلا لأن لما تعمل المنشآت والفنادق وغيرها في المينا هذه في نفس الوقت راح يخلق وظائف للناس اللي تبحث عن العمل فهنا تتم الانفتاحية هي ليس يعني استقطاب سواح فقط إنما تكون الافتتاحية للناس اللي تبحث عن عمل راح تكون لهم فرص عمل أكثر ونأمل إن شاء الله أن يتم هذا في الوقت القريب إذا أراد الله The fishermen sell their catch on the pier in Muscat. It doesn't get any fresher than this. Rich merchants used to live in Matra, when the district was still Muscat's financial center. Trading still takes place here today. The souk, a covered market, allures customers and curious individuals. Dealers offer their goods for sale in small shops. The scent of frankincense is all around. Frankincense was Oman's most important export item in ancient times. Tree resin was burned in ancient Egypt and Rome during ritual proceedings. According to the legend, Emperor Nero burned the whole of Oman's annual production at his wife's funeral.
The trees that produce this precious resin only grow in the south of Oman. They are harvested three times per year. Like this customer, men used to perfume their beards with a scent of frankincense. <laughs> Whoever is aware of antiques, kitsch or art can find real treasures in the souk. An established feature of Omani men's clothing is the kanjar, which we call a dagger. It is still worn on official occasions. Nadia al-Rahwi, the silversmith, produces the noble weapons for customers. Just one question. Why is the dagger crooked? طبعا الخنجر هي تكون منحنيه ما يستوي انها تكون سيده ليش لان لما يكون رجل يلبسها يعني وكذا ما يستوي انها يخليها كذا لانه يتعور فيها فهي ايش تكون لازم تكون من هنا منحنيه اساس انها ايش ما هنا تدخل يعني وتكون هذا تت يعني تعبه في الجلسه فتكون سيده يعني مسمه يعني منحنيه على اساس انها تجي على هنا ويكبس فيها The dagger casing is made from leather, which is embroidered with a silver thread. Training as a silversmith is required, so that this old craftsmanship does not disappear. Nadia is the master and trains young women in the meantime. Alhamdulillah, this is of course for us. We are sure that we are going to continue on this art because this is of course these Romanian traditions and traditions. We are going to be in the Romanian, especially the Khangar is the power of the Sultan and the power of the Sultan. So, of course, we are sure that you are a Romanian woman who is working on this art of Khangar, Alhamdulillah, and the Holy Fadliya. A trader's stall in the souk of Muscat guarantees good business. Mohammed bin Zahran, the halwa master, also has a small shop where he sells his sweet desserts. In his long lifetime, Mohammed has witnessed at first hand the change of his home city of Muscat. He responds diplomatically to the question of whether old or modern times are better. الحمد لله الحمد لله لكل صرف لكل صرف لكل دهر دولة ورجاله في عهد السلطان سعيد بن تيم ورحمة الله تعالى عليه على قد ذلك الأيام عشنا عشة سعيدة إلى أن الله سبحانه وتعالى أتى لنا من القام السامي السلطان قابوس وازدهرت عمان به والحمد لله أصبحنا في نعمة يعني لا تحصى ولا تعد كانت بالحقيقة ما ما كانت توجد إنارة ولكن الأيام مشت ونحمد الله على الماضي وعلى الحاضر. Muscat, a fascinating city whose inhabitants are proud of tradition, whilst remaining open to new things. The Sultanate of Oman is steering its own fate, and the people of Muscat look forward to the future with curiosity and optimism. <laughs>